This is August 10th, uh, 2010. The reading is a past life reading for uh, Arthur. Arthur, I can't pronounce your last name, so I don't wish to massacre it. Um, you asked for a general past life reading, and then you specified that you wanted a past life reading where you influenced a great number of people in that life. That statement changed the, uh, the reading to the influence piece instead of a, a general. Uh, I had several spirits show up. I got bothered several times during the uh, the weekend um, by some of these spirits. Uh, they keep showing up while, while I'm driving down the road or doing something else, wanting to give me their life story at that time, and I'm just like, no, wait until we are ready to uh, actually put this down. Um, so uh, the number kept growing, uh, so I, I usually do three or four past lives for a person that, that purchases a reading. Uh, you had some that kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. I have 11 of them that are going to be done today, and uh, this is why I opted to do the audio recording. They uh, wanted me to start first with the fact that uh, we have the eternal life, but I the between uh, the eternal life, which is on the spiritual end, we have our periods of time where we spend our earthbound uh, days going through our different lessons, different transformations, um, and, and trying to uh, find exactly where we are going with uh, our learning process um, for our spirit by, by going through this process. So uh, I want to warn you f ahead of time that some of these uh, past lives are light, some of them are dark, uh, some of them had many problems, and uh, some of them struggled very much to be in the light. We're going to go ahead and start with uh, one past life. This one was a priest. He traveled a lot. So this was back about, and they're telling me, 18th century. Did a lot of traveling. Uh, tried to unmask all the, the fallacies that were out there. Tried to bring forth the truth. Uh, had a lot of um, struggling of, of his own. He had a lot of inner demons of his own. He was uh, an alcoholic also, um, and he also was a smoker. But uh, the thing is, is that he tried very hard to help other people in spite of what he had going on with himself. He did uh, trust in his God, um, and that did help a lot because he also got called in to do exorcism. And exorcism is, uh, as you know, is not an easy profession to be in. Um, he did attempt to do exorcism. He did get called out a lot by the, uh, the demons he was exorcising because he had his own, his own inner demons that he was fighting. Um, so as, a, as an exorcist, they, he would get called on the floor a lot. Um, so he was an exorcist who on his own was not successful he would have to bring in other people to prop him up and give him the support he needed when he was attacked, which he was smart enough to do that. Um, and uh, he lived to be about 54, which uh, in that age was actually um, kind of old. But uh, because of his, uh, his work, he uh, did not live a very healthy life did not live a very healthy life and because of his vices as well. Uh, he did die of uh, a combination of cancer and tuberculosis. Uh, moving on to a second lifetime, um, and this one is very interesting. Uh, I, I kept getting different messages when when I when I um, was inquiring about this particular lifetime. This one was also a priest, but this one is something totally totally different. This was somebody who and you, and you seem to have at least uh, uh, three or four lifetimes here that uh, that dealt a lot with religion. Um, but this one dealt with the the what we call the left-handed path. This one um, succumbed to the dark side, uh, and and it was not a priest in. Uh, the usual manner, but was one who worked in the Temple of Set. And the Temple of Set uh, uh, was uh, people who um, practiced black magic and uh, pretty much self-edification. They didn't believe in worshiping, worshiping images and idols of, of gods. They, they uh, went to the extreme um, 
uh, and this one also, this, this lifetime, uh, went to the extreme uh, where he wanted to set himself up as being a god. So you wanted to know about the influences he had. He influenced people um, trying to get them to, uh, for his own pleasure, let's put it that way. He influenced people for his own pleasure, uh, for his own uh, process, for his own profit, and uh, get, get to get them to worship him through his acts of black magic and what he could do. He was more interested in, uh, uh, in himself and expanding himself uh, beyond the boundaries of uh, the human body and he was very successful at doing this uh, he was he was a male of course I'm, I'm, I'm calling him a he uh, you have some females mi in mixed in these past lives as well but this one was a male but he was a, a bisexual cross-dresser also um, and it fit very well into what he was doing uh, because he attracted some strange people he influenced a lot of people but he attracted a, a strange bunch of people he uh, um, he had his uh, um, home base I would uh, I guess you would say in the uh, area of England his home base was in the area of England okay uh, 1900s on, on him. Uh, you have another lifetime where you were a female and a mother. You were one of these mothers who didn't trust anyone. You had had some uh, abandonment issues when you were younger. Uh, people would always constantly leave you um, and uh, you decided that you had to find another way to get attention to yourself and to get people to do things for you. And because you didn't trust people, you kind of twisted them uh, in one way or another. Uh, used guilt trips a lot to get people to uh, uh, do for you uh, what you wanted. And uh, the uh, it was very uh, depressive for the people who were around you, and kind of like uh, somebody who sucked the energy out of other people. Um, it made you feel good if you could dump your your uh, your energies, dump your your problems on other people. But then you would guilt trip them it, very much into getting them to uh, do what you wanted to. So you could bend people around your finger very well. Yes, you did influence people. Uh, people tried to avoid you, but uh, uh, you did influence people as well. Um, actually, by being who you were uh, and, and uh, uh, making uh, people feel guilty about who they were uh, helped to turn them into uh, different directions where they needed to be going, and sometimes where they did not need to be going, but it depended on how independent they, they were in their own lives as well. Now, you've got a more positive background coming up here. Let's see. This one, um, 1762, thank you. 1762, you were a surgeon in that, that uh, uh, time. You were very religious, and this was the United States. Uh, very religious, but you were also uh, very much a servant to the people, a servant to society. You were very successful in what you were doing. It was a very positive lifetime. You really did make your mark. You helped a lot of people. As for influencing, not only did you influence people by the work that you did, but by who you were. This was a very positive lifetime. You could charm people. You could uh, uh, you could evangelize in a different a different way. Not I'm ta not to talk about religion, but uh, you could evangelize uh, on what people needed to do, and you worked not only with the physical, which uh, which was very important, but you took time out to help people uh, with the spiritual. It's like you would. Um, have a patient and you would take that patient and you would set them down and you would discuss with them also their trust in God and making through the surgery and everything else but back then you, you really kind of needed that because sanitation was not at the top uh, of its uh, uh, presence at that time but uh, yeah we didn't have a lot of good set of sanitation back then but you did what you could with what you had you were very successful at what you did um, you, s you uh, did uh, 
work as a military doctor for a short period of time, um, decided that that wasn't exactly where you wanted to be. You worked in a, a sanitarium for a short period of time, helping patients there, and you, you uh, decided that isn't, wasn't, isn't where you wanted to be. You moved on, you finally took a private practice and worked through a hospital um, with your private practice. Okay. Um, Moving on, they want me to move on to another one. Okay, you have a, 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 a lifetime where you were a professional beggar. This is in India. Um, and professional beggar, and, and that's the, the word that comes, but a professional beggar as also a holy man. Uh, this is somebody who um, uh, would not own anything of their own, including their own clothing. They didn't. They didn't actually own any clothing. There's still people around today that are like that. That are holy men in India, that absolutely wear nothing except ash. And uh, you were one of these type of people. Um, but you would. Uh, um, you would be. Uh, somebody who practiced inner awareness. And the inner awareness is what um, uh, you were more uh, attuned to. You were a skinny person. Th this, this lifetime is male also, a very skinny person. Of course, I if you had to uh, live on uh, the, um, uh, the kindness of other people and their donations as, as to uh, uh, how you could get your food from day to day, uh, you, you didn't have shelter, but uh, you... you uh, uh, would get your food from day to day, um, depending upon other people. They would come to you for blessings. They would come to you for um, what we call life rituals. Uh, this is um, passage, uh, a passage from one part of a lifetime to another, a rite or, or something like that. And, and they, they would uh, provide for you in that way. Um, so the, uh, the lifetime was uh, not a waste, actually. It influenced a lot of people. People would come to you. Uh, they would seek you uh, out as uh, a wise man as well. And um, they uh, would get the information that they needed uh, because you had that connection. Okay, we have another lifetime. Okay, and this one is a, a, a lifetime that's not so good. Uh, this one, let's see, this one is a, a, f a female, and uh, this one is a, a female who would uh, turn people through influence, through gossip, through blackmail. As a younger person, you could not stand to be alone. So how could you get other people to do things for them? You uh, had leverage on these people, and you did influence them in this way uh, through your leverages, uh, and you uh, used them to your own uh, profit, let's put it that, that way, and your own whim. Um, you uh, gained a lot of uh, power this way by passing on uh, private information, secret information, and um, betraying confidences. Um, not only did you take this to your own private level, but then you took it to a professional level, and you had people who would come to you with uh, their instances, their coincidences, their uh, experiences where they needed somebody with this kind of uh, leverage against people. Um, somebody who could talk their way into different circles of people and get the, uh, get the information on them, get their little secrets. Uh, and, and let's just put it this way. You didn't stop at just talking. When you were trying to get the little secrets and stuff, uh, it went into the bedroom as well. And you gained conference, uh, confidences of these people and uh, went forward on uh, uh, in any way you can. Theft, uh, getting into uh, private writings, anything that you could get on people, you did it. Uh, and you were paid well for it. You lived well in this lifetime because you had this power. You lived well. But this was a lifetime where you were really 
alone. You have